everyone um it's darren here and welcome to week one of the small group chats um i'm really uh, privileged to uh, share this week's small group um talk and notes with you um and yeah so let's just get cracking so in small groups we are going to be looking at the life of moses um, as we go through these next 40 days and um, you know the story of Moses is of course the story of the deliverance of his people but it's uh, also the story of the development of a person um, and I'd say the life of Moses is definitely all about learning to wait on God's timing so um, well as I've been looking at the whole of the Moses story um, I reckon his life and experiences can be neatly divided into three 40 year periods. And I'm going to be concentrating on the first part, the first 40 years, um, where he's kind of like schooled in Pharaoh's house. And you might like to say where he's learning to be somebody. So um, in your notes there, you'll see I'm looking at Exodus. And I'm also using Acts 7 and Hebrews to further enhance our understanding uh, of this text and the story okay so the title for this week one is what are you waiting for and I've been really really mulling this over this week and examining the like the push and pull of this statement because I was looking at it one way and then looking at it another way so um, it can have two interpretations and it can be the question what are you waiting for is there something you're waiting for are you waiting for a house? Are you waiting for a, a doctor's appointment news? Something that you're waiting for, a question. Or it can be an invitation to action, almost a push and urge. Um, and it can be, you know, like, come on, what are you waiting for? Do it already. It can be that kind of just, you know, pushing you into a, a movement or an action. So in this week's um, small group studies, um, I want to look at how um, Moses, um, what happened to Moses and how, what happened to him when he responded in both of these ways to this statement, you know, what are you waiting for? So I'm just going to go back a bit so that we can, um, know, know a little bit about the background of where Moses was from. Okay. So Moses was born into an Israelite home in a very, very difficult period. And according to Acts 7 verse 17, um, it goes, as the time drew near when God would fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt greatly increased. But then a new king came to the throne of Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. This king exploited our people and oppressed them, forcing parents to abandon their newborn babies so they would die. At that time, Moses was born, a beautiful child in God's eyes. His parents cared for him at home for three months. Okay, so... They were caring for him at home and then we know we know as the story moves on you know they trusted god they depended on him and they made a um a, an ark of bulrushes and they placed him in the river um and that's where pharaoh's daughter found him and you know not only did god give moses back into his own mother's care but he actually managed so that the daughter of pharaoh paid her to do it so that is a pretty incredible story already and how long was Moses in the care of and under the influence of his real parents? Well, probably uh, until he, at the very least, until he was weaned. And in that day and time, it could have been as much as five years old. Um, so I'm just going to take a sidestep here. You know, when you are raising children, you know, and if you've got five years in those crucial stages, you know, this Moses parents, you know, remind us of this really important truth that the influence of consistent loving parents cannot be overestimated. You know, that influence of godly parents in his early life had an immeasurable impact on his values um, and it, how it guided Moses through his life. So we can really take that uh, into our lives today and just use that as an amazing example of how you know uh, our influence can um, help our children to grow and guide them in life. So Hebrews eleven twenty four shares with us with us that Moses' parents knew he was a special child and they that they weren't afraid of the repercussions for hiding him. And they had this precious and God given time to raise Moses and teach him their faith 
and all about God's promise to rescue and redeem his people, that promise all the way back in Genesis 15. So we are told of Moses' time in Pharaoh's household in the beginning of verse 21. And it says, when they had to abandon him, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and raised him as her own son. Moses was taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was powerful in both speech and action. So you don't really know any more of the details about his first uh, 40 years, um, and, but uh, that's his life in the palace. He was completely you know, involved in it and he, he learned in wisdom all of their um, history and their life. Um, and he lived that royal life and he lived it with all the advantages uh, of the Pharaoh and, you know, opening up before him. And he was trained as a scholar. He was a prince, a statesman, a soldier, all those things. And so for those 40 years, he knew what it was like to be a somebody. And uh, the Jewish historian Josephus sorry, <laughs> tells us that this Pharaoh had no other children apart from his daughter and his daughter had no other children apart from the adopted Moses at this time. Um, and it's, um, it's very likely, scholars say as well, that Moses would have succeeded to the throne of Egypt as the next Pharaoh. And yet, Hebrews 11, 24 to 26 tells us, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And he chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. So, you know, to put it simply, Moses believed God. That upbringing from his parents right at the beginning, he knew what God had promised his people, the Hebrews, and he believed that God's plan to Abraham would be fulfilled. Okay. And so he was letting go. He was willing to let go of the pleasures of his position and follow God. But as is so often the case, and this is where we really get to it, this guys, what was begun as an act of faith, he tried to then accomplish in his own strength and in his own time. So he tried to do in his own strength what God had promised to be possible only in the spirit you know, what God had put into his heart through the promised word of God, Moses tried to accomplish in his own power, and it didn't really work. So in our text, Acts 7, 23 to 24, we read, when he was 40 years old, he thought he should visit his brothers, the Jews. He saw one of the Jews being hurt. Moses helped the Jew and killed the man from Egypt. So this is where we see where Moses started to go wrong you know and two things really leap out at us here first Moses went wrong when he allowed himself to be ruled by his passions he was angry that his fellow Hebrews were being mistreated and he struck out you know he was in that moment of you know my people need to be um redeemed my need people need to be set free God you know what are you waiting for and then took it all you know into his own control and just move forward himself in his own strength you know and for us as believers you know we might need a bit more fire and passion in our lives but we cannot let our passions take over and I am a really passionate person and this is where I struggle because I do I feel the need I feel this kind of burning inside and I just want to kind of move forward with my plans and actually in my passion or even anger or whatever it is that's motivating me my need to get it done whatever even if it's you know seemingly righteous um when i strike out like that it can lead to um disaster almost um and you know we'll also oh, almost get the wrong response as we'll see that moses got the wrong response from his people too and the second thing moses did was that he acted prematurely it's quite linked and it's often at this point that we get into difficulties too you know we don't know what to do we are waiting on God but we don't wait long enough and then we devise our own way out of the situation rather than wait any longer on God so Moses had tried to rescue his people and he had been the right man in the right place with the right motive but so completely at the wrong time so I'm sure that will resonate with many people. I know it does with me. 
And the end result of that was we read in Acts 7 verse 25. He thought his people would understand. He thought they knew God would let them go by, go free by his help. But the people did not understand. And you see that the next day Moses came to some Jews who were fighting. He tried to get them to stop. Moses said to the Jews, sirs, you are my brothers. Why do you hurt each other? Um, one was beating his neighbor and he pushed Moses away and said, who made you a leader over us? Who said you could say who was guilty? Do you want to kill me as you killed the man from Egypt yesterday? So called up short, at the age of 40, Moses, who was a somebody, became a murderer, a marked man. His rash, impetuous and violent actions severed all ties with his previous way of life. And overnight, he went from the heir apparent to the throne to a fugitive on the run. So his own people, the Hebrews, they, they did not want and they probably feared him and nothing had turned out as he had planned. So his dreams now lay broken and buried with the man he had murdered and had hidden in the sand. And then Moses ran. So that's all that I'm teaching on this week. And I'm just going to just just give you a slight bigger picture as well as we go through the week. You know, according to Deuteronomy 31 in verse 8, Moses lived to be about 120 years of age. He um, spent his first 40 years, like we've just looked, learning to be a somebody. And then he spent his next, I would say, 40 years learning to be a nobody. And you'll learn more about that. And in his last 40 years, learning that God can and does use nobodies. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to give any more away, but as others will be looking deeper into the rest of Moses' life, but it really is astounding how Moses went from learning about waiting for God to fulfill his promise of deliverance, to pushing God, you know, in, in his own actions, in his own strength and saying, you know, God, come on, what are you waiting for? I'll do it myself. And that attitude to eventually in his last 40 years, God was almost pushing Moses back. And almost saying, come on, what are you waiting for? The time is now. The wait is over. So where are you guys? Are you waiting for something? And in that waiting, are you pushing God? Are you pushing like, come on, God, you know, I can do this. I can, I can do this in my own strength. I'm, I'm ready. I'm in the right place. I'm the right person. But is it the right time? You know, and how are you interpreting this week's title? What are you waiting for? So I hope these insights have been useful uh, i've out outlined some discussion questions for you uh, and the text as well so you can dig deeper as a group and um, i really hope you enjoy uh, what are you waiting for bye guys <laughs>